played Dusa eleven times in the uh in competitive. It's actually pretty high right up there with his anti mage. Hmm. What does PR want to take here? Uh they could take like a Nyx Assassin. It's banned out, they're not gonna take it. Um Yeah, Nyx would have been good. Mm, they really need another support unless they want to do this greedy jungling beastmaster. That's okay. Maybe like Oh. They could run AM themselves. Really? AM. You will, I think you generally want a mana burner versus Medusa. You'll see Nyx, uh PL and Juggernaut with the Fusal I also think is yeah, really good. Yeah, but with Luna Timber Saw, that's like You could do like aggro with like Rubik Luna like we saw earlier and then like Beastmaster Jungle and Timber Mid. That's like super greedy though, but it depends on how much work you think the uh, Elder Titan's going to do. And they have a Deuce on the opposite team, so you're not really worried about her like going into your jungle. So they will pick it will be the Jungle Beastmaster and Tinker Tinker is Okay. It's all right here. It's, it's like super farm. It's like there's three cores need a lot of farm. Yeah. This and is... they have a jungle beast master. <laughs> All right. We're going to have a break and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Esport live score. The fastest esport scores. Banobet. Go where the winners go. All right. Perfect timing here as we get into game number one to observe our first pause. Well, I was afraid of a Naga Alchemist game, and instead we got a Tinker versus Medusa game. I guess slightly better, but really not by much. You uh, called the wrong heroes, or the heroes in the wrong patch. Yep, yep, you're right. Hey, man, we saw some Naga, we saw some Alchemist. I think we saw an Alchemist Naga game at the summit. I think Empire can, like, they can actually win pretty early with their lineup if they get off to a good start. Like, yeah. they can easily breach high ground with, like, a Oracle with Death Prophet, because I think Oracle is actually really good at the high ground siege, because, uh, especially with Death Prophet, because you can fate to Edict her, and she can still do damage to towers, and she won't take damage from March or Rocket. Like, that is really good, and she doesn't get affected by laser. So, yeah. I think if their cores fall far behind, the BOT comes out a little bit too slowly, if Luna starts feeding, if, like, Elder Titan ruins Beastmaster Jungle, I think I can, I can foresee, like, so many things going wrong for Power Rangers, but... They do have a lot of cores, and they do have Tinker, which is notoriously difficult to breach high ground with against. Yeah, I think you're right, though. Empire definitely could get aggressive early. We've seen these Medusa builds where you just need, like, Phase Boot, Aquila, Wand, and then plus Lance. one more item. You know, you can go Yasha, you can go Lance. That's pretty good. I do like that build as well. And you're this pretty scary siege and machine. You're pretty beefy. You can knock down towers. Your Mystic Snake does a lot of damage. And Stone Gaze really adds a lot to these team fights, especially with Slardar doing some, you know, physical right click damage. Death Prophet as well. There's just a lot of synergy with these fights. Even just having a slow, if they're facing the other way while uh, the Exorcism is on, can be very helpful for Death Prophet to get off those Spirit Siphons, drop some Crypt Swarms, you know, make it happen. So this we'll game's see. A lot on the Elder Titan. Because the Elder Titan is like because they have all these greedy heroes you need heroes that can run around and disrupt their farm death prophet is pretty static hero season lane dusa is like probably one of the most static cores in the game at least uh that's the trend you'll see like mushi and some other deuces like play a lot more active uh, but generally you just farm for 15 20 minutes and then like slarar is in the off lane so he's kind of getting sacked so elder titan's the really the only one that can really run around oracle has to be on zoning timbers all duties yeah, and they're going to start nice and early. This is what you want to do against Cheshire Cat. Echo Stomp. He will be able to regen through, of course, that first point in reactive armor, but even a Mystic Snake flying through, it sounded like. Yep. All right, so Rocky start for him. DP on Tinker mid. Should be pretty much a farm fest. I guess there is some kill potential for the Death Prophet if the Tinker really steps too far forward, but both sides with a lot of farming tools, a lot of harassment. DP just a little more sustainable. Afterlife. He's having some trouble too. Nice stun on two. The telekinesis is just annoying. Lunar Blessing. 14 damage at level one. 
Well, shit. Yeah, Slaughter's struggling, as you mentioned. They only need two heroes to do this, so... Power Ranger is definitely getting the better part of this early game because Funix just right-clicking some centaurs right now. Although... Don't we usually see four at level one? Definitely do. Yeah, dude. Inner Beast level one? What is this? I don't know. Funix. Crazy. So, the thing about boar level one is that it not only does damage over time, but it also has an attack speed slow. So the creeps do less damage, even though you have to tank them. I feel like that damage and mitigation alone makes up for more than 15 attack speed at level 1. But it's a small difference. You hit level 2 very fast. Very peculiar, though. Common misconception that the ore does damage over time. It actually does not do any damage over time. It doesn't do it any? It slows. Nope. It's just slow. I, I thought that for a really long time, too. Hey, you're right. It just is slows. poison, but it's just attack speed slow. and uh, I think it's like the only poison that doesn't actually do damage over time in like any fantasy game ever. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from level 1 minimum scale. I thought it was like Orb of Venom where it actually did just like a very little tiny bit, but, you nope. know, it was there. All right. Good to know. Good to know. God damn. Getting schooled left and right here. That one's... That's... That one I can't really blame you for. That one's like a pretty yeah. common thing. But still, they do... I don't know. They I, do a lot of damage. They they do. And so there was something about the attack damage change. It was like maybe two patches ago. I remember Nahaz talking about it where they changed the damage type of the boars or they changed the armor type of neutral creeps. Whichever yeah. one it is, now the boars do more damage to creeps than they did before that change. It's also... Uh, it, it also helps a lot with your Iron Talon because you can pull into max range like he's doing right now and, like, take very little damage. When you just Iron Talon, like, it's a way more difficult to kite and attack at max range. You take a lot more damage from the creeps. So, in general, people prefer level 1 Call of the Wild. But, you know, Funic does strange things, so I'm not, like, terribly surprised. I mean, hey, dude, Desolator Ricky. It really worked well last game. That was a joke. It sucked. I don't know why he did it. It did. It actually didn't do anything. Like there was not a point in that game where it felt like, oh man, good thing they had that Desolator debuff. They're doing so much damage now. Like there weren't that many scary right clickers that were getting massive damage off. It's just anti mage. Yeah, but even then, like he had the Desolator for so long when the AN was still just like yeah. split farming. <laughs> like. I think he was just trying it out. Maybe he thought he could get a lot more solo picks with it, but I think the utility from Diffuse was just way too high, especially versus Mana Leak and uh, in Search. But, you know, that's... I'm pretty sure he learned his lesson. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, possibly. It's cool to see people try new things. It's like, oh, why not Desolate on Riki? All this damage is physical. It synergizes so well. Yeah. And then you get into this situation and then... Uh, like, if anything, you would have just built agility, but, you know, Diffusal kind of covers all those bases. But that's enough about that. That's that's about last game. Looks like Cheshire Cat doing a lot of work on the Ramsey. Just not even interested in casting that mana shield. Yep. He'll salve up. A lot of creeps here. Dire creeps. Radiant creeps. Double stack. Why is he not, just not snaking? Okay, there he goes. I was like, oh, he's just not the Snake is, like, almost a free spell. Uh, when there's two range creeps and then when there's three range creeps, it is the free spell. Yep. Well, we missed the first blood down bottom. Great work, man. Rubik, Luna, able to set it up. Fairly really straightforward. Very close to dying, too. A lot of burst damage. Two points in the fade bolt. Yeah, the snake is ridiculous. That is one of the things about Medusa at this stage that makes her so scary. And the mana drain actually really hurts if you can hit a hero with it. Yeah. Because a lot of people uh, don't go for mana items anymore. They, like, rely on the base mana buff. Uh, but, like, you'll see, like, lots of Keelas because of that. Um, less, like, no Talismans or Bracers because you have more base mana. And, like, it just really punishes you for getting hit and not going any mana items. Yep, checking in on the mid lane here. Uh, looks like it's a fairly even slugfest. Both sides actually denying pretty heavy. But within one or two last hits of each other, Undershock being annoying. At a very small experience disadvantage. Courier flying overhead as J4 rotates in. A little bit of kill potential here, but he does have a couple of those infused raindrops. That'll help absorb some of the damage. Tower is under 
Already down to three charges as he does a little wrap around. Nice crypt swarm. I don't know why he just Oof. didn't turn around with spirit. I, uh, I guess he only had one spirit seven, but that was not value regen. Yeah. Good, uh, good game for the infused raindrop though. Oh my god, dude. I just missed another kill down bottom. I keep ignoring this lane. I don't know why. It seems like fighting over this uh, big stack up top is more interesting. This time Afterlife gets a little bit of vengeance. That's actually pretty big for the solo offlane Slardar. Yeah, it's really big. Oh. Rubik was healing. Looks like he's looking down with two crushes. Yeah. Gotta respect the Slardar, man. Hey, you were hyping it up. You talked about Better it. Better version of Centaur. <laughs> now his damage output's pretty ridiculous. Funic just now hits level six in the jungle. This is the power of the Beastmaster. If he's left alone, he can hit. He hit six before the Death Prophet mid. That's insane. Cheshire Cat up top. Fortune's end. Snake actually connects. Wow, that was really close. He almost timber chained out of there. But I think the snake would have followed him anyway, right? Yep. All right, not as close as I thought. Still. Ramsey showing us what the Medusa is made out of. Big damage. Big damage indeed. I like playing Medusa. You like what? I like playing Medusa. Uh, she's much better now with the. She's much more fun to play now with the Physics Sync book. I've been going Phase Boots, Yasha. I think I got to try this Dragon Lance build. Dragon Lance is more of like you have a team. For solo queue, I'm not sure if I would recommend it. Uh-oh, Undershock taking a lot of damage mid. Spirit Siphon will keep him alive. Maposhka, the stomp to reset things. Very nice. Raindrops, so value versus Tinker. Yeah, even though you do lose it pretty fast, it saves you in situations like those. Not feeding the Tinker is so important at this delicate stage when he's trying to get those BOTs up. Yeah, and I thought Maposhka would be a lot more active in the jungle, but he actually just has not been... In the jungle at all, and Funic is three levels above him. You can try and you can try and attack him, Poshko. It's too late, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's only level three. Definitely a slow start for him. We just have the infused raindrops. Value Town. Another one of these passive slugfests here. Three kills, seven minutes. Better, way better for PR. But Jungle Beastmaster looks like he's not interested in... Uh, we see a lot of Beastmasters go like Trank and Smoke or just Salve and Smoke as soon as they hit 6, but I guess he deems the Death Prophet too difficult of a kill or perhaps the Elder Titan is behind. I think that Roaring Bottom would actually be really good for them. Oh, yeah. Roaring Afterlife, killing him, and then getting a lot of damage on Tower with the Aquila and Luna would be play. But dude, Look at this guy, dude. He's got raindrops coming out of his ass. He's got two sets of them. Who? Slardar. Oh. Good item, oh, man. Big Nom. They're going to go for this mid. Undershock dives the tower. Takes a laser, but gets off the Spirit Siphon. Doesn't look like they'll be able to get the kill on the Tinker. More heroes rotating in. Funic thinking about a Primal Roar, perhaps. Empire just in full retreat. Wow. There are 10 people watching with Empire team pennants. I don't know if that's... Last game it was nine. Sad. Or kind of cool. How rare are pennants these days? Like, is it awesome that 10 people are still watching and using those things? Or is it more like, only 10? It's... They, they've been out of, uh, like... I think, like, Val developed them a while ago. Maybe TI3, I, I think it, say? It's like, yeah, TI2 or TI3, somewhere about that. Yeah, maybe both. But, like, ever since then, they haven't really been sold, so... It's kind of like a... It's a rarity. Oh, the Fnatic one always makes me laugh because all the people that bought those were like fans of the old <laughs> European Fnatic team and now it's a C squad. Yep. It was only a dollar though, right? Something like that or a dollar ninety nine. I thought it was a cool idea though. That was really before that whole like crowdfunding prize pools and all that stuff was really mainstream you know that was a really cool way for teams to make some some extra cash and have people survive. I mean I remember just when these little banner things were put in or whatever where you get to see the team logos like that, that was cool that was really cool it's like oh wow these teams actually now get some branding on stream sick
crazy to think how much stuff has changed. Take it all for granted now, man. Uh oh, down bottom. Got him. Drops the eclipse, but it goes into the creep wave. Not going to be a kill. What a stomp from Mapochka. Yeah, this ET is breaking it up. Looks like HOD on the way for the Luna. So we're going to get some stacking going on here. And that'll be the end of it. Man, three kills in ten minutes. Farm, 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 farm. There's got to be a timing here for Empire when they're going to want to group up and start using this DP ult to take some objectives. I think they can do Roche pretty much any time. Not that they have Slardar ult and Exorcism. They don't even need Exorcism, really, but I don't know if they only like, want to sacrifice that much farm in lanes. I think they need to break some T1s first. Oh, no. Cheshire Cat, Fortune's End from far away. It's an Undershock from behind, and they bring him down. Spirit Siphon locks him in place, and... Now they could just transition this into a tower push if they so please. There is an exorcism at the ready. Their tower timing is like going to be a very slim window because Tinker has BOTs. 2,000 gold flying out right now and Ooh. one exorcism has taken down the tower. Another one was used in mid but didn't really yield anything. And all the meantime, Funic has just been jungling. His network is actually really low. Or AFK Jungle Beastmaster. Yeah. He's going just straight for the Necro Book. Really nothing too crazy about this build. Maybe Funic trying out something a little bit different here. Ramses. He went for the phase Yasha. Hey oh, there's the build. See if he goes back for that Dragon Lance or what. He is number one. Depends on, on how much though. they want to siege. Yeah, that's true. Maybe not because uh Oh, he might die here. Mana shield. Does that have a stick? Oh, nice side stepping. Now Oracle's inbound, and then False Promise will keep him up. There we go. Hmm. I'm just happy not to see a default Manta build first. God, do I hate that. Or not Manta, sorry, Lincoln's. Sometimes Lincoln's first is the right item, but my god. There's so many games where it's like, why? Thanks for sustain. Like, imagine right now if he had a Perseverance, he could be, he could be like, you know, full HP and like have two thirds of his mana right now, and then he can go back to lane. Like right now, if he goes back to lane, he's a little bit worried about dying, and he might actually die here because he's not top dog. Yeah. So the it's a lot of it's just because of the lane sustain. Yeah, he needs some friends up here. That's for sure. Medusa on four is pretty darn scary. His team might just opt to split push instead. No DP ult for 30. Nice. They can take a tower without DP ultimate because he has a DD. Oh, God. A lot of pauses. Yep. Jiminy Cricket, guys. Well, DP's about to set it up on Big Num mid. He's got a double damage rune. Big Num's also got a laser, so I don't know how that adds up. I think Oracle Burst will be enough. Fortune's End into a Purifying Flame, perhaps? Yep, into another Purifying, into a Crypt Swarm, and another Spirit Siphon. Hey, Ben, what do you think about Bitcoins? I do not know that much about Bitcoins. Do you have any? I saw Did that, I? uh, the, no, I'm, I'm not a big Bitcoin guy. I mined some Litecoins for a little while, and then I gave up because I wasn't the making enough. Litecoins? They're like shittier Bitcoins, but, um, yeah, anyway. The, the guys that almost invented Facebook that got zuckerberg by Zuckerberg, they, uh, they own a Bitcoin currency exchange thing, and they just sponsored a big esports team. They want to what is it to, called? Um, is Gemini, I think, is the name of their company. Uh oh, Cheshire Cat up top. Uh oh, he's going to be able to Timber Chain out, though. I think he's just fine. Might be able to turn on to Maposhka. Doesn't want to commit much for it, but give him a little love tap back the other way. He has no Whirling Death. It's pretty hard to kill. Oh, he doesn't have a single. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Wow. Super defensive build again. Like, I feel like one point Whirling Death is worth worth it over the last point in reactive armor. You know what I mean? Especially for Strength Heroes. I completely yeah. agree. You know, obviously, it's not doing huge damage, but here, just lowering the stats is so good. Undershot going to chase him down. Crypt Swarm does connect, okay. but it's not enough. Max Reactive, I guess, saved him right there. Actually, <laughs> he would have taken less from right clicks if he had, if he had yeah, one more kind of goes both so. ways. Yeah. Still have not seen Beastmaster all game. 
Yeah, seriously. We saw Mag move out of the jungle at level 4 earlier today. Oh, that was a pretty sick smoke from uh, Maposhka to dodge the rocket. We saw him move out of the jungle at like level 4. This Beastmaster is 0-0-0 zero, zero, and zero at the 14 minute mark with a Necro Book. That is if pretty wild. If he can get wild. away with it, then why not? Because, like, because of the greed in their land. He expects Empire to come to them, so this way he can like set up for more defensive roles. He doesn't really have to make the move, and he's putting the onus onto Empire, but... Yeah, Empire just gonna contend, slowly pushing towers. They didn't get the one mid with the DD, and looks like they will have to commit to an exorcism at some point. And Blink Dagger's up on Sorrow. I think it's time. All right, Tinker's time. still trying to get his footing here. He's got his BOTs, but not much else besides that. Still doesn't have a Blink. He'll knock down the Tier 1 tower mid. Empire, they are ready to strike while the iron's hot. Ramsey's with quite a bit of gold up on his Deuce. He's just going to TP down bottom, get things set up for this push. They're going to start moving into enemy territory. I like this. They have awoken from their slumbar. As Gotham continues to stack up Ancients here. He's got nothing but an HOD. Luna is definitely not in fighting shape yet. He went for this more farm intensive build. He just wants to sit back and get some stacks yeah, going. I mean, he's like, oh, it's on the courier. Pretty, there it is. So yeah, he he's actually else. pretty farmed. She All is right. second highest in net worth. Yeah, with the Yasha, that's a bit different. Oh, stomp on three. Under shock, it's pulled forward. He has an ult here, but there's the false promise. Gonna save the exorcism for now. It looks like Spirit Siphon doing so much. Merlini three down. J4 on the run, and he's going to get taken out also. That was without the exorcism. That was just a straight-up false promise into soul Three sucky man. sucky on the entire team. Three-man blink crush. That was a sick setup, dude. The Elder Titan made that whole thing possible. Good hero. Thank you, Elder Titan. We're going to relive the madness here, folks. Don't you worry. We caught it all on the instant replay cam. Good thing we hired this mobile camera operator. Oops. All right, here we go. There's the stomp. Connects on three. You think, oh, God, Undershock, you're dead. But then the Oracle comes scooting in just in time. And all the follow-up damage is there. God, they just drop like flies. Dude, Spirit Siphon is so ridiculous in those close quarter scenarios like that when you're just slowing the entire team. Yeah, God. they also are slowed from Slithering Crush. Like, that double slow is really good. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good point. No way you're getting out of that. Now Cheshire Caddy's on the run. Echo Stomp will put him to sleep. Spirit Where was Siphon gets the Yules or the Silence? Aftershock, hello. Yeah, they're both available. Just choosing not to use it. Slardar might be able to find a crush here. He's fast. Look out. He's going to have a blink crush. There it is. Oh, he gets the bash straight away also. Silence, not going to need it. Got it off that time. Okay, he had an arcane rune. That makes, makes it a little easier. Could have been a lot cleaner. No big wow. deal. Yeah, when you're right, you're right. Maybe Ramsey's going rapier. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Is that, I guess that's uh, not the most ridiculous thing, right? Even though he's dead now, Primal Roar comes out. That'll be the end of his mana pool, but oh my god, he's going to live. Oracle's there. Now the turn. Again, Maposhka with the setup. Fun at getting low. Cryptswarm will bring him down. All of a sudden, this Beastmaster, 0, 2, and 0. Doesn't seem like all that time jungling's really worked out so well, Ben. No, he doesn't need to be there for these type of fights. Like, firstly, Dusa had Aegis. Like, you might kill her once. You're not killing her twice, because she'll get stone gaze off after the Aegis. Secondly, Tinker's supposed to be the one that stalls him, not Beastmaster. Beastmaster needs to be the one split pushing and constantly forcing Empire to run back. Because that's what Empire wants to do. They have Oracle, they have Death Prophet, they have Medusa with Aegis. They want to be the ones taking towers. They just got the Blink Dagger on Slaughter not too long ago. You know, they're looking to slay people. And if you're a Power Ranger, you want to do what you were doing in the first part of the game. Get, the, get those net worths up. Like get those stacks up with Luna. Like you just lost a big fight near the mid T1. You're not going to be approaching that anytime soon unless you get a pick. Just work on your economy. Get at the farm game. It's going to be boring, but that's how you win. <laughs> Well said. They're going to go on this ancient stack here. Maposhka telekinese forward. Stolen Echo Stomp. Not going to do much. Kimber saw jumping forward, but again, another pause here. PR with two disconnects. And there must be something going on on the internets today, Merlini. Bad server, maybe? I don't know. The so slaughter is going back for a minus. I see it in his stash right now, so... Yeah, heroes are just interested in getting their farm on. 
Yeah, I think it's yeah. the right call for Sword Art in particular. I, I really like Midas like pickups like this on heroes that can also benefit from the attack speed. And anybody with a bash is pretty happy to have plus thirty. Maybe not troll. Okay, maybe not troll. That's Everyone fair. else. That's fair. Gotta maximize now. Funic almost dying to Ancients. Oof. Luna still uh, has potential to be quite scary, though. Her farm uh, is still definitely. not bad. Especially with a Tinker in the game. Because you, you know that you're going to get time. And Dusa is going for Scotty. Scotty's a pretty reasonable build here. Yeah, this is uh, kind of that Mushi classic. The phase boots Yasha right into Scotty. Kind of the best of all worlds. One of Medusa's problems early on is that movement speed. So phase boots Yasha is more than enough. And then, of course, Scotty gives you everything else. Yep. Very well rounded. Very solid build. build. Yeah. The hardest Way part is just. Lincoln's first in this game. Yep. Oh, yeah. The hardest part is just getting over the hump to actually get the Scotty. But once you have it completed, you have this huge power spike. I think Empire is just going to continue to five man around it. Yeah, they still have Aegis, so, you know, like, that, it, that re it requires so much damage to kill her twice right now. Like, 2.5 times 1,200 is 3,000, and then add that to her HP. Yep. It's insane, actually. Tinker, about to come in to try and contest, but decides to cancel it as he sees all the enemies inbound. Instead, PR opt for a counter push of their yeah, own. This is this is what they should be doing for like the next, I would say, at least 10 minutes. Just straight just, split pushing? Straight split pushing. You have the Necros, like get Blink Dagger, just be super annoying. And force Slaughter to go like a Shadow Blade to catch them all. Uh, force Empire to trade towers, force them to like push high ground, buy pipes, like just be inefficient with their farming and their movements and always give up something in return. You need time for Tinker to get his Aether plus uh, plus Ags. But on the flip side, Empire could just threaten high ground at some point with the uh, next Aegis. Looks like they are going for the Hooded Defiance on a Death Prophet. So it looks like they are actually trying to end this game fairly shortly. I think if they wanted to go for um, l later game build, she would go like Veil or like Octarine or something like that. Yeah, probably doesn't really need the plus armor as well from Veil this game. There's not as much minus armor stuff she needs to worry about. The magic damage, definitely a big threat though, especially with the Luna. I, I really like it here. I think the Hooded Defiance with the active is going to provide yeah. a lot of value. It's definitely, good for Siege. Yeah, definitely not a game where you can get away with just a casual cloak and expect to live through much. Here we go, Exorcism on the Tier 2 mid. March going to try to slow things down, but really not going to do a hell of a lot. They can outrange a lot of it. Aegis will be recovered about five and a half minutes until uh, the big boy respawns. Tier 2 tower dies, does go the way of the Medusa. And it looks like Empire will just back up and probably wait for another exorcism cycle. Not going to press their luck at the high ground. Just going to play safe, continue to take map control, and just back up into safe territory. Finding me very annoying. So is... Goddamn. They... Need to deward their ancients though. Like that area is heavily infested with Empire observers. Sure is. So, Empire probably just waiting for Roche PR, just looking to stall out, cut creep waves, get some more towers in the meantime. I don't really expect any large scale skirmishes to happen. And let's see how hard the Death Prophet commits to the magic. Resistance if she completes the pipe or if she goes for Octarine right now even Bloodstone I don't think would be that bad for her, but Octarine is probably better if they want to end the game Then again, you have a Dusa, so maybe you don't even need to end the game Yeah, it looks like they're gonna kind of cover their bases here Medusa moving into probably a Lincoln's uh, King R on the Oracle moving into an Aether lens nothing too surprising about that But I think it's really important for Oracle to get off those false promises this game like we've seen so far so now he can sit even further back, or I guess very soon he'll be able to sit in the way back and keep this Death Prophet alive. And she's got that point booster hanging onto it for now. Get those extra stats going. Oop, they get a catch. Yeah, they're going to find J4. It's an easy one for Ramses. Kind of an interesting rotation. Three of Empire deep in enemy territory, two of them way back. Not really the kind of movement you would expect, though. Luna might get caught here. She does have a TP scroll. Slardar blinks up. He finds her. That'll be the end of the TP, but now needs to be careful of the Eclipse. Medusa just lobbing snowballs from the low ground. And Undershock up top. Yeah, she's not even going to be able to get the ult off. 
And the fake Zeta came out just in case the Eclipse did. Two great pickoffs for Empire. Indeed. I don't I don't know what Luna should get this game. I think she needs the item to actually aid her in split pushing. She's going for BKB, but I don't think it's like a BKB sort of game. BKB terrible versus Medusa, not particularly great versus Death Prophet. So and what, it doesn't help you split push. What is the ideal split push? I think you like uh Link is actually pretty decent if if you're going for this sort of uh build. Wow, look how much damage Medusa does to the timber saw. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have all of his reactive stacks going yet, but Still, those right clicks hurt. Up top now, Big Num gonna be caught by Maposhka. Afterlife on his way in. Not gonna find the crush. Manages to get the blink reset. Makes it into the tree line. Now rockets flying around. Maposhka stuck in the trees. Will fall to the march. It's an unfortunate death there, and another kill going the way of the Tinker. Yeah, I would actually like Blink Luna in this game. Like if if Luna gets blink, if Tinker gets blink, if Beastmaster gets blink, like how are they really gonna catch people? Like it has to be all Slardar. So if you see Slardar on the map. Like, you can just push all the lanes at, at once. And he can't catch ever, everyone. I don't know. Maybe he can go Shadow Blade, though, on Afterlife. Let's see what he goes for next. He has 2,600. He can also go BKB if they want to try and push high ground. But I don't know if you want to commit that hard to the high ground breach. All right. Well, still the passive farm, fa farm game continues. This was a very slow Necro 3. You'll see these messers with good farm get at 15 yeah, minutes. Dude. He got at like 23 maybe. What happened to Funix farm? Like he was completely I, uncontested. I, honestly, I just don't think he's played it that much because of the inner beast level 1. Uh, yeah, that's a Inefficient point. rotations, dying twice. Not getting kills with roars. A lot yeah. of small things. Yeah, you're right. I mean, juggling with Beastmaster is pretty easy, but it still takes a very specific rotation to get that, like, maximized You have farm. to practice it. Yeah, right. yeah. It's... Funnick doesn't seem like the type of guy that would just s spam jungling in, like, <laughs> 1v0 games <laughs> to get that maximum efficiency. Yeah, down bottom, Timbersaw, caught by the Yules, right into a silence, but no follow-up damage. On the backside, the Elder Titan gets caught by the rest of the Power Rangers squad. Cheshire Cat will survive through the silence, and now the real fight begins. Eclipse... Gonna bring down Afterlife nice and quick. It's gonna be a fast two for nil, and now Empire might have to back up. Dusa pops the ult, starts shooting split shots all around. They will get a kill on Funic to start things off. Exorcism has been used here. PR on complete back feet. At least they forced him to use Exorcism, so it was actually not that bad. Like, Beastmaster gave us life. They didn't have Roar. They didn't have Eclipse, but I still think it's okay that they uh, went into the Medusa. Yep, Ramsey's still kind of lingering around here. He needs to be a little bit careful. Lincolns gets broken. Now J4 taking a lot of damage. Mystic Snake not going to take any bounces. This could still be a kill if she can get off one more auto attack, but no. Luna comes in. Empire maybe lingering around a bit too long here. Undershock doesn't have the ult any longer. A couple of Spirit Siphons. Ramsey's can't decide if he wants to run or fight, and now he's going to lay a lot of damage into Cheshire Cat. Medusa gets credit for that after a Purifying Flames brings him low. Now J4 tries to TP out. Yule Scepter's there. Echo Stomp going to set this up. They won't even need it. Plenty of Ramsey's damage. Ramsey's positioning is really good. Ooh. Like, he is, like, right... He's always in between PR and Empire. He's, like, always pretty close to his supports. And whenever he finds an opportunity to attack or throw a snake, he does. And he doesn't really concede any of his positioning that much. And then, like, if they really want to commit, they have to get past a Scotty. And he's just making it super annoying to get to the Oracle. Like, Oracle stayed alive that entire fight because of... Uh, Oracle's positioning as well as the Medusa's positioning. They, like, play very well around each other. Yeah. Yeah, Ramsey now, like, when you go for this build with the Scotty, you just have so much utility in the fights. The slow, the yeah. attack speed slow is really devastating. You compare that to someone like Luna. Yeah, she's scary when her ult's available and you're in the jungle without creeps nearby, but this last part of the fight, when she didn't have an ultimate, it seemed like it was just Empire's fight pretty much all day. They had to have a little bit of a back and forth, but even without the Eclipse... Or, uh, pardon me, without the exorcism. Luna without Eclipse just feels very lackluster right now. Yeah. This, that's kind of the dream is a sport where, you're, where your cores actually care about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty decent lead for Empire here as they move into the last outer tower for Power Rangers. It's tier 2 in the bottom lane. It'll fall to rubble. No defense made. Breaching high ground, though. Completely different set of difficulties. And will be very Ramsey's difficult positioning. against Tinker. Yeah, it, he's making it difficult for the Tinker to get marches off, though. Like, he can't run into the middle of a fight and cast marches because the deuce is there as well as the double Yules. Like, Yules owns Tinker really badly. 
Yep. So he has to be very careful. He almost has Bloodstone, so he will do the be super annoying on high ground. But I don't know with the uh, the Fate Edict and potentially the Aegis pretty soon on Dusa, I think that breaching the T3 is very likely possibility, and it will be very difficult for them to actually deal with it. Yeah, fair enough. DP very close to the Octarine. A couple more creep kills and she'll have it. Then you can feel a little better about forcing these fights. The ultimate's just on a shorter cooldown. Doesn't feel like you have as much pressure on you to go, go, go when you pop it like that. It ended up working out pretty well for them in that last fight, but kind of, kind of like that metamorphosis effect that you see on Terra Blades, where if you get them to force it out, it's like, well, we gotta go now. Yep. Manta on the way for Ramses and the BKB for Slardar. It seems like they're just itemizing really well to try to breach the high ground. There's the BKB on uh, the Luna. I'm starting to kind of agree with you, though, my friend. I don't, I don't know that the BKB is going to be the end-all, be-all. She is now level 16, so it'll help her get in position for those good ults, but... Uh, does the BKB really keep you safe? Like, I don't think you can still trade right clicks with a Medusa that has a Scotty. Nope, you cannot. I think Butterfly BKB it would be fine, or just straight Butterfly, so you can pressure out lanes a lot more. Yeah. Wow. Puts chat excited at the uh, potential of a 420 hero kill score. <laughs> Almost. Could be likely. Uh, yeah, true. Maybe Empire full wipe them and then push the high ground and then kill one of the supports that respawns. Who do you think is going to be the first hero that dies on Empire, though? Uh, probably the next next person to disconnect in a team fight. Um, I'm gonna go with Maposhka. I was oh, thinking actually Slardar. Yeah, I was thinking like has, No, he has BKB though. I'm going with Maposhka. All right, yeah, that's probably the safe. But he's been using his Yules mostly for setup to catch people, not really defensively. Oracle has been positioned just too well. Medusa, Death Prophet, way too beefy. Yeah, it's got to be Maposhka. It could I still could see be Slardar Slardar getting Slardar roared. Like, yeah, I could see getting I, roar without BKB. God damn it, dude! You took the words out of my mouth. I was <laughs> just about to say that. Like, I could see a roar into Eclipse. Like, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of damage, especially if he has Sprint on. Actually, Beastmaster doesn't have doesn't have Blink, so actually, I'm still going with Maposka. <laughs> How does he not have more farm by now? We're 30 minutes in, and he's got Brown Boots, Necro Volk, and a headdress. Funny is also just not a ricer. Like, whenever he played an offlaner, he was always like contesting and looking for engagements so it feels like, like funix just mad about something and spending some time in the jungle so he doesn't have to deal with anybody i honestly just don't think he really cares that much because it's not as you know it's just like because he didn't even know he was playing in this tournament until four yeah. hours ago <laughs> yeah i mean that's possible it's just weird like you even just look at his kill score he's zero three and two even with the rubik that's very atypical for that hero Game got, one he owned though. Yeah, he was just clouding on people with Rubik. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That that those Mansa lose are gonna <laughs> not do anything. Yeah. I mean, Ramses is just too big. They can't kill him, and he hits pretty hard. The funny guy, I think, should commit his necro to the side lane push. Like, and actually just it, secure the tower. Get yeah. The build that you can. It's not that useful against a Medusa because she has Aegis and she has Stone Gaze and she has Split Shot. She's strong enough to just kill them very easily. He needs to be he needs to be shoving this lane as hard and as fast as he can so that Empire have to think about backing off. But they're not. Oh no, Gotham dies before he can even use the BKB. He does have a buyback. Balloon is dead already. Not a good sign. Glyph just still five standing. More kills. Yep, that's true actually. Although Undershot getting low. Uh oh. False Promise comes out. He's going to move back up to the high ground now. Purifying Flames. Going to start picking him back up. Now the Glyph. Uh, didn't really get too much healing out of that, but Ramsey's going to stay on the high ground. Remember, he does have the Aegis. Now the buyback comes out. Oh, it was say goodnight King to 420. R. King R, the Oracle. Oh, it's because of the got TV back to defend. Yep. And Ramsey's going to lose his Aegis here, it looks like. He does stutter step for a moment. Not going to be enough damage. Regening actually pretty fast. Jesus. So he's got stone a Stone gaze, gaze. Silence. 
Is this actually going to work out for Empire? They could set something up here. Spirit Siphon's now coming out. Ramsey's splitting arrows all over the place. They don't get any Stone Gaze procs, but it doesn't matter. They've almost got the damage to kill the Timber Cell. He has to go high ground. Got him. Tries to man up. And, well, it sort of works out. He sets it up for the Tinker, who does refract the laser for a double. Medusa and Elder Titan down, but now it's going to cost Big Num his life, it looks like. Undershock will finish him off. Timber Saw on the run. Chakram almost clips Afterlife. He could still find this kill. Blink up top. Very nice. Oh, Daddy! <laughs> Minus 20 armor and a low. That was impressive. You don't you'd usually see that on a Timber Saw. Imagine if uh, Death probably had a pipe. Medusa would have lived. Yep. Now another very chaotic fight, but of course it is Empire that come out big. At least they got Dusa. They got they hadn't got Dusa. That'd be so demoralizing. Yep. Primal Roar on Afterlife. They're gonna be able to hold this. It looks like nice old from Oracle. We'll uh, reset they things better for get him. some heroes out of this. Yeah, buyback on the Tinker. Undershock just gonna TP out. They kill the Oracle. Oh my goodness! They only got one hero out of that. But that's it. it. Was it Oracle? Now Luna and Tinker both on buyback cooldown. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty grim. Some Dusa will fourth item Dragon Lance. Looks like Slaughter will be going for what seems to be a heart. I think heart is excellent for high ground siege. Like you can just tank rockets all day with heart regen and march. Uh, also, it synergizes very well with false promise, although I don't think he should be getting false promised. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know what to make of this Dragon Lance from Ramses. It's like I have this no qualms. Dragon. I have no qualms with this build here, but why don't you just get the Dragon Lance early? It's such a good value item to build up, like before you finish the Lincolns or the Manta or something. I guess it's still yeah, good for really sieging it pretty much every he had stage. Right? most of the time before. Yeah, that's true. He had a slot like, yeah, whatever. Right. Uh, I think it's fine. Like his other items have been. Like, do you think he upgrades it into a Hurricane Pike, or just leaves it as a Dragon Lance, then resells it later when he needs the slot? I think you leave it. Okay. Now got him. Caught by Afterlife here. He will Manta. BKB used. Oh, God. It's a wasted Eclipse. What a BKB from Afterlife. And a wasted Roar. Oh, PR. Oh, he BKBs. Why? He don't want to get used. Yeah, okay. Or Blink Stomped. It didn't look like there was going to be enough range for it, but yeah. Afterlife's Better safe than sorry when you don't have any buyback. Yeah, like, okay. That's, that's a That's fair one point. of the things like you're like, oh, sh crap. Why didn't I BKB? Like, that's... Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You, and you just die and you lose the game and you don't have buyback. That's, and like, he, a really stupid way to lose. Cheshire Cat just evaporated under the double damage Ramses. Oh, Necros, don't feed. Oh, my. Oh, 400 gold. Dude, this is, like, almost game over territory for PR. They are in big trouble. And this is such a sad way to see him go out here after that amazing game one. They're just falling apart at the seams. They just wasted their two big ults on a BKB hero. Didn't even bring him close. Now they're high ground, under siege. No glyph, no tier two towers. If they lose this fight here, Empire are gonna do crippling damage. Still about half duration left on the exorcism. J4 caught. Rubik will be the next one down. He does have a buyback. Laser refracting about. They really need that pipe. Yules, nicely done. King R gonna be able to survive for now. The stone gaze gets popped. Funic caught out of the base. He'll go down next. BKB Death Prophet will live. PR do have buybacks on the two dead heroes, but they probably won't have to use it. End of the exorcism, and Death Prophet will just head back. They're going to reset and then try this once more. Get Roche, maybe. That was a pretty well executed siege. Like, the Death Prophet is... The, these two heroes are so tanky. Like, he threw so many missiles and little robots at him. The little robots. Yeah, yeah. the march. It was pretty dirty, honestly. And if they don't even have a pipe, that's the thing. Once they have the yep. pipe, it's actually. I don't think he's gonna go for a pipe though. It'd be worth it. It's gonna be a hurricane pike on the Deuce. A very interesting choice from Ramses. And there's the heart on Slardar. So a lot of big items still coming out for Empire. That gold grab. Yep. Still plummeting down in favor of the Dire. And yeah, they're done for. Unless Tinker can. Actually, Tinker was kind of close to killing them with uh, after that refraction. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with the laser. If you can catch it on, you know, half the team, it's pretty ridiculous. That's why I think it's still worth it to upgrade the pipe. Meh. Laser pure damage, though. Hopefully, I'll have some missile in March. 
Oh yeah, you're right. It is pure damage. I always forget about that one. Why does so much deep, dude? It does yeah. like almost more damage than level one Laguna. That's ridiculous, actually, when you put it in that context. Yeah. So it can refract between all enemies that are within range. So it could actually refract to all five if you're completely grouped up. Yep. That's ridiculous. They still have a lot of damage, though. Like, Medusa can uh, Manta style out of it, and then doesn't affect Exorcism. So it's, like, not a huge deal. Here we go. Tier 3 tower under siege. They do, however, have the Glyph. But hey. look at Remy's position, dude. Dude, that Rubik's still oh split shot. Look out. He's going to AoE him down. You can still split shot? That's cool. Apparently. Dude, this is like what the easiest spell. racks ever. I yeah. just want to see him auto attack with it. I do not think I've ever seen Rubik steal split shot. Or, or use it at least. Come on, dog doesn't even take any mana. Just toggle it on. <laughs> You're doing 400% damage. 400. Or just 100% when you're not using it. Oh, Cheshire Cat, he's going to get caught right into a bash. So much follow-up damage. Timbersaw will fall. He does not have a buyback. And this could be the beginning of the end for the Power Rangers. Their base is already in shambles. Now it's a 5v4. Exorcism up in 50. Primal Roar used. DKBs popped to plenty. Undershock and got him going at it. But now this Medusa is just charging up the high ground. They'll lose their Oracle, but so much damage from the split shot. Yules will interrupt the TP home. And Power Rangers are following are falling. The Megazord is just crumbling beneath their feet. Refractions just not doing enough here, Merlini. It was well fought, but it looks like Empire will be able to take this one and face Alliance in the winter bracket finals. I think they should have picked a better split pusher instead of Luna with the way that they played. I also think that Funic was like super inefficient with the way that he formed. But overall, yeah. Empire, I just something was wrong with game one. With them yeah. game one. Game two and three was like more the Empire that we know. Could have taken those odds. Yep. Yeah, that's the cool thing about the live odds, guys. Um, but throughout the best of three series, when both of our series today, game one was super one sided. It's like, all right, this is going to be a stomp. And then game two, you have that moment of, wait a second, it's like 18 times payout for this, and they just want a team fight. Hmm. <laughs> And they brought it back. So an interesting day of Dota. Death Prophet did not die once. Wow, look at that. What a game from Undershock. Merlini, it was a pleasure. Thank you for joining me for more uh, gro gl global Grand Masters playoffs. My god, I'm starting to get a headache from this this sickness, man. It's catching up to me. I'm ready for a break. It was a pleasure, though. Thanks for joining me. GG's. Thank you. Yeah, man. We're off for a couple days here. I'll pull up my calendar and give you the proper date, so uh, not to be confused. Uh, we have a break until the 22nd, so two days off, and then uh, I believe it is just one series a day uh, all the way up to the Grand Finals, which will be coming up on July 26th. So a lot of Global Grandmasters action to look forward to. If you enjoyed this cast, give us both a follow on Twitter. We would certainly appreciate it, at Sayori TV and at Merlini Dota, which you can find in the title of this broadcast. You can follow the tournament at G Grandmasters, and of course, at Moonduck TV to stay up to date with all things happening at the studio. Outside of that, we're done. We'll see you later. We got a couple jams to take you out. We'll see you next time for more Global Grandmasters.